welcome back. So, in last uh, uh, lecture we were talking about that how uh, the folds are formed and uh, how we see the interlinking of the fold uh, two folds to give rise to a larger uh, anticlinal fold. And as I was talking about on that day that uh, this was one of the best site uh, which we identified for trenching to see the ancient uh, signature of the ancient earthquakes. So, this is a tip of a plunging anticline which is moving in this direction. So, whenever there is a rupture or displacement on this particular fault that is in South Wagad fault, then uh, what we envisage is that this will grow further towards uh, the east. So, we identified as I told that uh, the best place was the uh, mm, uh, this notch of the anticline or, or the nose of the anticline which we said and then uh, we picked up that if there is a deformation in the quaternary deposits a very young uh, 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 deposits then that will be helpful for us in picking up the most recent earthquake uh, which has occurred along the South Wagad fault uh, during historic past. So, uh, uh, fortunately we found a uh, very beautiful uh, uh, artificially uh, cut uh, uh, fold or the ridge uh, which was been uh, dug for the irrigation purposes and we found a vertically stacked uh, Mesozoics and tertiary rocks and there is a contact between the tertiary and the quaternary. So, we, we decided to trench in this area. So, this was the, uh, uh, the, pan the panoramic view of the fault scarp which runs in almost like east west direction and this fault scarp is facing towards south. So, south facing fault scarp. So, close up of that. So, we identified and this usually we do uh, what we call uh, to identify the ancient uh, earthquake signatures preserved in the in the stratigraphy. So, we that is known as paleo seismology. So, we opened up the trench. So, this was the area which we marked and selected uh, based on our experience and we we, pre we we believe that the fault is running somewhere over here. That so this was a small, uh, not very small, but yes, of course, uh, a, a pit was open using uh, uh, JCB back hole to look at the section because this will give us the deformation pattern. If you study this section open here, uh, we will be able to see. So for for us. Uh, we were very confident that the fault is running somewhere over here and this was the trench which we opened and stratigraphy which we studied and after uh, demarcating all units what we see this the uh, the trench and this the uh, the log of the trench which shows the deformation or the folding of mesozoic rocks from like unit a a3 and then then you are having the uh, tertiary deposits on the tertiary succession which also got folded and displaced. So, this is the faulting which we see uh, in section. So, uh, the F unit was the youngest uh, the east the, the belongs to the younger deposits F and G and the fault which has displaced this over here it dies out somewhere here. So, what we uh, say that the the, the event the most recent event took place after the deposition of unit F and before the deposition of unit G. So, after we say after the deposition of unit F and before the deposition of unit G. Now, why we say this? Because uh, this was the surface at the time of the earthquake and which got displaced. So, the, it, if this was the surface before the earthquake that means this existed before the event. So, this already the deposition took place. So, of the event occurred after the deposition of unit F and since it is 
capping this deformed unit if the deposition of G came up later on. So, we say uh, the event took place before the, the deposition of G took place. So, this gave us a bracket between the uh, uh, bracket of uh, uh, of the event actually that, that we will we were able to pick up. So, this is uh, extremely helpful and this uh, uh, we suggested here that there will at least uh, two events and those two events uh, uh, not two, but at least three, but two events uh, uh, were responsible for uh, resulting into an great damage to a Dhola Vira site uh, uh, that is an Harappan site which is uh, not very far from this fault. So, these are the interpretation which we made and uh, uh, based on the, the paleo seismic studies. So, I will stop here and uh, uh, we will continue in the, uh, the next lecture what we will talk uh, in the next lecture we will immediately start that uh, we will talk on the ground deformation uh, which is extremely important uh, for the for understanding that what will be the site effect at the time of the earthquake even if the, the fault is sitting away from the, uh, the site then also uh, we should not underestimate that uh, in terms of the damage that we will not be able to experience the damage if you are even sitting away from the default. So, that we will talk about because the deformation is one part which will take place on the fault. For example, I will just put the, the sketch here like you are having a fault here and you are sitting somewhere uh, the, the town is somewhere here. Okay. So, of course, the maximum peak ground acceleration uh, will be at this point, but if you, even you are sitting away depending on what is the uh, the, the sediments one okay, and depending on that what is the rock type you are having the deformation uh, or the or the site effect will be different. So, that we will discuss in the in the, in the next lecture what we call the ground effects. Okay. So, uh, this we need to take into consideration if you have uh, whether we are your houses or the, the settlement is sitting on the uh, the soft uh, uh, sediment succession or your houses are or the buildings are sitting on the hard rock. So, this is uh, going to change the scenario or the pattern of damage over, over the time. Okay. Now, evaluation of the earthquake hazard is extremely important because as I told in the previous lecture that even if you are sitting away from the, uh, the epicentral area, uh, you are bound to get affected because of the seismic waves which are traveling uh, from far distance. So, depending on what is the what are the type of material which is on which your site is located, uh, that thing will uh, bother us. Okay. So, for seismic hazard evaluation, mainly what we look at is uh, uh, the seismicity and ground deformation of the area. So, we uh, we try to see the historical seismicity and then ground condition. Uh, what 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 is the type of material on which uh, we are putting the foundation of our structure that is extremely important effect of earthquake vibrations on sediment type because different type of sediments like if you are having sand if you are having clay uh, the vibrations the amplification will be different from place to place then we are having seismic investigations then duration of the seismic event how long uh, is uh, uh, was the uh, the event and how long it is expected uh, when there will be a next earthquake. Then magnitude of earthquake is also important because depending on that uh, where your uh, your fault is and where the epicenter will be, how far you are sitting from the uh, the fault line, the magnitude will uh, will play an important role in terms of the ground shaking or the intensity of the ground shaking 
and then we also try to look at that what are, what are the precursor events which can help us in identifying or uh, predicting the future earthquake uh, this is not very much uh, uh, like uh, uh, we we did not get uh, and uh, what do you say uh, that uh, they achieved we have not achieved fully uh, in terms of the precursor events because it is a bit difficult uh, to say or to tell or to pa pass on the warning that at what time and uh, at, uh, the earthquake will occur but at least we can we are able to understand and know that of course this area is prone to earthquake and what will be the expected magnitude for the next earthquake uh, that's a bit sure for that along with that measurements of electric and magnetic uh, field people have been working on this and of course as uh, the as we have um, discussed in uh, uh, one of the lectures where we were talking about that magnetic field of the earth and all that so when there is a disturbance or the uh, the ground shaking or the sudden release of the uh, the stored energy some changes uh, will be uh, observed in terms of the magnetic and electrical field so people are doing research on this and hope in future we will get success uh, looking at such information so geological and geomorphological records this is what we are doing because as i told in the previous uh, lecture and where we were talking about one of the case history from Guj gujarat uh, kutch around south wagad fault all the formation which have occurred if the sir, the rupture has reached right up to the surface then they will get preserved in the geological uh, records and geological records we can say that they will be preserved in the sedimentary uh, sediment records and geomorphology and the different landforms will be found which we say tectonically formed landforms plotting of seismicity data on geological map this is a preliminary exercise usually uh, we do try to understand that what is the uh, the pattern of the seismicity whether it is aligned along one particular fault or uh, it is a uh, uh, diffused seismicity we see, if we see if it is getting aligned along one particular fault then there are uh, we one can say that okay fine this uh, uh, earthquakes are triggered along this particular fault and and, and there is a likelihood of having a bigger earthquake in future so and study of accelerogram so uh, to evaluate uh, the uh, um, the seismic hazard uh, uh, seismologists or geophysicists they try to look at the seismogram gram or or the accelerograms of the previous earthquakes which can help uh, in terms of understanding that what was the peak ground acceleration at that particular point uh, or, or the site of interest um, based on the uh, uh, the previous events which have occurred in that particular area so that can help us in understanding the site effect of uh, uh, the site of interest so seismicity uh, seismicity and ground conditions if we take uh, what we see is that uh, if you are having in suppose a hard rock and a particular magnitude earthquake has been triggered then in sedimentary rocks you will have different amplification and this is based on the propagation of the surface wave and in alluvium which is a loose material the amplification will be a bit higher as compared to the sedimentary rocks but as soon as you get into the the very fine deposits silt and mud and all that then you will have an amplification will be very very high so if you consider this as an himalayas and this as an endogagetic plain then one can understand easily or say that this area is going to be affected more because the amplification uh, will be much higher so ground shaking will be um, uh, will be much much high as compared to what you will see in the hard rocks okay of course the himalaya is not purely consist of the hard rock it all also have fluvial and marine deposits so we will we will face something like what we see in the sedimentary rocks so amplitude of seismic waves and acceleration varies from place to place it is much greater on deep deep thick 
alluvial than in the rocky terrain. However, some well built rigid buildings suffer less damage on alluvium than on the rocky. So one has to be extremely careful that they use uh, while doing the construction or coming up with the, with the, uh, the structural analysis they should use the uh, uh, BIS code as a building codes which are assigned for that particular uh, region and that is one of the, uh, the important part where uh, the geophysicist and uh, even the structural engineers they study the exilograms because they, they are in, they, they want to understand that what is what was the peak ground acceleration uh, by a particular earthquake which has occurred in the past or the recent past in on particular fault but poor construction will be more affected and if you if you ask us you would say that most of the construction done in the alluvium in Indo-Gangetic plain is in most of the areas villages and small towns it is poor construction so chances of having in greater damage uh, we cannot rule out so effect of uh, vibration on grounds so what basically happens is that stronger vibrations during earthquake can affect the portion of the upper crust comprising thin pile of loose unconsolidated sediments now this cohesiveness uh, sediments mainly sand and silt undergo compaction because of the cyclic stress they will uh, go under compaction loosely packed water saturated sediments can lose all shear strength and behave like liquid so as soon as they lose the shear strength and the structure which is sitting on the top of that uh, surface will collapse this phenomena is known as densification this will result into increase in pore water pressure which eventually result into the formation of sand boils i'll show some example of the sand boils from great run of kutch which we observed during 2001 bhuj earthquake and this phenomena is termed as liquefaction so for liquefaction, what we see here is that we have a an, an capping unit uh, which is not uh, water saturated, which is not porous as compared to what we are having the porous deposits here. We have a sand and we are having a very typical uh, bonding nature of the, of the sand uh, that is an arrangement of the sand grains and in between the available pores are filled up with water. So this remains under uh, a, a typical condition where there is nothing is happening, no, uh, if whatever the overburden you have, but this will not collapse. But as soon as you shake this, okay, so these are the pore pressure and the pore water. Uh, so before earthquake, the grain remains packed due to friction between them and the weight of the ground is supported by the sand grains. So this will be taken by the sand grains and all that because of their uh, arrangement. But when there is a cyclic stress, because when uh, the seismic wave passes through the such units okay, or the uppermost part of the, uh, the earth crust, then it will disturb this arrangement and that will result into the compaction. So during earthquake shear wave results into increase in pore water pressure causing formation of sand boils at the surface so liquefaction is defined as a phenomena that causes transformation of water saturated sandy or silty or you can say cohesion less sediments it transforms the material into liquefied state due to increase in pore water pressure and since the, the pressure is low towards the surface, uh, the, the high pore water uh, with higher pressure will move, break the surface and come out of the surface. So you will see, I will show some examples that uh, when there is a compaction here because of the cyclic uh, stress, then this material has been, uh, the top layer has been broken and then material which is over here 
because of the compaction and high pore water pressure it will rise up break the surface and come up to, uh, and eject it or to the surface. So, this is one uh, uh, short movie which talks about that how will three buildings engineered equally on different bedrock react to an earthquake. So, same building with same code, but constructed in three different areas. So, different bedrock how they reacted. So, uh, building motion will be exaggerated to emphasize the wave here it is they, they have emphasized here and uh, let us see how, how what, it, what it shows. Okay. The motion of similar buildings on different bedrock will be exaggerated to show the arrival of compressive P, shearing S and rolling surface waves from a regional earthquake. Three consecutive seismograms will show the changing frequency and amplitude resulting from the change in rock type. The initial P wave arrives with a compressive bump and rarely causes much damage. The slower shearing S wave introduces a side to side motion that can throw loose objects to the floor and may crack walls. The rolling surface waves are the most damaging in unconsolidated sediment. As surface waves enter the sedimentary layer, they slow down and increase in size, causing buildings to roll. If not engineered for the motion, they can crack and tumble. But even a well-engineered building can sink during the shaking and liquefaction of underlying wet sediment. The first seismogram from the pink building on solid ground shows low amplitude, high frequency waves. When the waves hit softer ground, they slow down and increase in amplitude. It's this higher slowing roll that is so destructive during an earthquake. I'll stop here. I'll continue in the next lecture. Thank you so much.